Good morning all. New Parkside 12 volt electric drill bought from Lidl for £15. Uh, this one is the PBSA 12D2. Now there was, prior to this, a PBSA 12C2 and they're very similar. That's the 4 amp power battery on that one. That's the 2 amp power. Um, this one has the gearbox selector switch up the top there, has a magnetic holder for the bit, which this one doesn't have. The C2 had the rotating uh, gear selector, which I really like, but this is more noisy. In fact, let me see if I can show that. Uh, this one also has the uh, voltmeter, or at least the battery indicator. On the top they're not very good these battery indicators they seem to be quite badly affected this one slightly less so but when the motor's running it does weird things to the to the battery indicator so these are cheap um brushed motor as you can see from the sparks they have a light i mean it's got all the stuff it even has this removable chuck which is really handy because uh, that's good for drill bits and that's um, a hex end which you can put screwdriver bits directly into and then it's a little bit uh, shorter profile. Now I'm pretty sure that the C2 drill came as a complete set with battery and charger included. The D2 doesn't, that just comes as a bare drill. Um, it does come in a box. So this quite nice moulded case which has room for the drill with 4 amp hour battery. Also space for a 2 amp hour battery, uh, that way around I think, yeah like that, and of course space for the charger, and that's what this video is really about, it's about the charger. And this is how you buy the charger, it's the battery with the charger, 11 .99. now they do sell this 2 amp hour battery on its own. I should have checked the price of uh, this battery, but it would be very surprising if it was less than £10. In fact, I'm, I would have thought it was more than that. That makes the charger worth two quid. I'll have to go back to Lidl and check uh, how much that battery is on its own, but let's assume this is about two quid, two pounds. What do you get inside a two pound lithium ion battery charger? Well, let's find out. So I'm thinking not a lot. There are two LEDs on it though. Uh, yeah, two LEDs, a red and a green. Some of my Ryobi chargers only have one LED. Get these screws out and see what's inside this incredibly cheap charger. Let's have a look. Oh, there's not much on there. Right, mains in here. Uh, this is a fuse. It says T2 amps. So it's a time delay fuse. Capacitor, inductor, another capacitor. There's no um, NTC here, so there's no inrush current limiter. But then maybe you don't need it with such a small cap. We've got 10 microfarad, 400 volts there, 10 microfarad. 400 volts there. This is 10 microfarad 50 volts. So that's obviously on the low voltage side. On the bottom we've got um, BD1 bridge rectifier. There is a Q1 here. So that's a transistor, probably a MOSFET. And there's a little six pin controller chip here. A uh, big inductor here. So this is the main switching transformer to get from high voltage to low voltage and opto-isolated there for the feedback loop. Big diode stood off the board because it presumably gets warm and a capacitor here which is presumably on the low voltage side. Let's take a look, 16 volts, 680 microfarads. It is um, 105 degrees C rated though. 
So no common mode choke on here. There is this uh, inductor which is there. So it's a series inductor after mains is rectified by the bridge rectifier. Where are the caps on here? Okay, so there's a cap before the inductor, a cap after the inductor. So this is the noise suppression circuitry. Pretty minimal stuff. I've noticed there's another six pin controller chip there. So that's the controller chip for creating the oscillator which drives the transformer to transform high voltage down to low voltage. This is the low voltage side. And then this other six pin chip must be the uh, controller that does the sort of lithium ion uh, stuff measuring battery voltage. Battery is on these two. So yes, it's on that triple connector and that triple connector. So it's measuring battery voltage, looking for end of charge. Uh, there's no temperature components here, but then that could of course be in the battery to prevent charge if it's extremely hot or extremely cold. And uh, I can't find any data on either of these two six pin controllers or the MOSFET. So I suppose for a couple of pounds, um, you wouldn't expect much and you don't get much. Really just the bare minimum to pass. Uh, we've got a TUV mark on here. We've got CE, of course. Um, these are components, blue ones, I noticed are called CY1 and CY2. So uh, those presumably are just capacitors, but class Y. I'll see if I can read what's written on them. Yeah, it's quite hard to see what's written on these. There's 222, so I'm presuming uh, 2N2. And I can just see 400V, so uh, these are 400 volt high voltage capacitors. So a quick look there at the charger for lithium ion power tool batteries, which have had to be brought down to an incredibly low price for them to sell at all. Um, now I have done uh, strip downs of the 2 amp hour and the 4 amp hour batteries, so I'll put uh, a link in the description to those videos. And I did buy from Lidl um, a dual charger, which seems to charge at a higher rate. This one is 2.4 amps. I've got a feeling the other one charges at 4 amps. So if you're interested, I will do a teardown of that. And that one, I think, because I could hear them, had some fans in it. Maybe you have to place the PCB in the base with that in there and then lower this down over the top, trying to get the battery connections to slide into their slides. Yes, it's all a bit tricky, really. Oh, maybe that's done it. Yeah, that looks good. Now, here's where it gets interesting because this is the uh, PLGK12A2 but this which was uh, with the previous drill is a PLGK12A1 and it's substantially different on the mains input side we have an NTC that's a, a 5D9M fuse class uh, X I think is the yellow capacitor common mode choke big uh, high voltage capacitor much bigger switching MOSFET with a heat sink, a bigger overall transformer. And that's interesting because I just took this one apart, having spent 10 minutes charging a battery and that transformer is absolutely red hot. So on the newer one, a surprising amount of stuff has been cut out because what I really wanted to do in this video, and I was rather disappointed it wasn't on here, was talk about how the negative temperature coefficient uh, thermistor starts with a resistance I think around 5 ohms I think that's what the 5 means and then when it warms up that reduces to almost nothing so it prevents an inrush of current into this large capacitor so by doing away with that um, they've had to go for smaller capacitors time delay fuse but uh, there's no protection against inrush current the smaller capacitors maybe just make that a bit less severe. And it's interesting, what happens here is um, if you plug this thing in, this thing has, this the NTC is cold, 
and has about a 5 ohms resistance, it warms up and goes to almost nothing. Then if you unplug it and plug it back in immediately, of course this um, component is still at a very low resistance. So wouldn't you get a problem with inrush current? Well, not really, because at the same time, this capacitor stays charged. So it doesn't present the load that it would present um, if it were discharged. So there's a very curious time race between these two components. This one based on temperature and this one based on the charge that's still in the capacitor. And you notice with a lot of these modern switch mode devices, the lights stay on for several seconds after you unplug them. And that's because this, this capacitor is quite big. Um, but it holds its charge so that um, until this has drained away, this component has time to cool back down and go back to 5 ohms and prevent the inrush into this capacitor when it is discharged. That's what I wanted to talk about, but none of that stuff's in this one. This is really cut down. So a quick look at the electronics on the A1 variant. We've got a similar uh, SOT236 pin controller on the high voltage side. This is high voltage DC after the uh, bridge rectifier and big smoothing capacitors. That's oscillating, chopping the signal so that it can get through this transformer. On the low voltage side, there's an 8 pin controller chip for the lithium ion related stuff. Well, that's been replaced on this newer variant with the little 6 pin one. Not so much stuff there. Looks like there's a lot more circuitry here. Just driving the same two LEDs. But yeah, they've pared the circuit down to uh, get the bomb cost lower. So yes, I like my power tools cheap, but then when they take out interesting components that do fun things like the NTC and the capacitor, this sort of time-based race, I feel a bit short-changed really. Uh, such is life. Cheerio.